Are you ready for some Jersey? Well, we've got Jersey. The zipper was made here. The light bulb was made here. The color television calls the Garden State home. Everybody wants to know about New Jersey. Sandy beaches, beautiful cities. We even have the Jersey Turnpike. Inventors, music, the movies. You need an exit? We got them too. You want Jersey? This is Jersey. Welcome to this edition of This is Jersey. We're on Main Street in Belmar on this snowy morning to take a look at CZN Art Gallery and Experience and talk to its creator, artist Jay Alders. Jay is a real Jersey guy and is known far and wide for his surfing and beach-inspired paintings. Jay's style is beautifully unique and has been recognized as some of the best in the genre by publications and fans worldwide. His new gallery shows off some of his most famous pieces as well as surf art in a variety of mediums from other artists. So Jay, how does a kid from Howell become an international artist? Uh, well, it's quite a long story, but I guess I've been doing art um, since I was a young child. I've always had dreams and aspirations of being a professional artist, and um, when pondering it, the, I could date it back to kindergarten. I actually started my art career then. I would sell tattoos for change in kindergarten as about a five-year-old. So I think it all started then, I guess. So you used to draw in school, get in trouble, that sort of thing? Uh, yeah, I did actually. I spent more time drawing on my notebooks or the desk rather than uh, schooling, which I'm not necessarily proud of, but it is the truth. So you have an interest in the ocean. You're right here in Belmar. What makes your art different than several of the other people who do the same thing? Well, that's a good question, and I guess ultimately, I don't really focus on what makes me different. I just try to be myself and be the best at what I do. I feel like that's more important. I, don't, I try not to use comparisons, but um, I just try to use whatever skills and passion is within me to express myself visually. It comes out um, through my style of painting, and I guess what everyone else does is their thing, I guess. You were affected greatly by the music of your dad, I understand, his old vinyl yes, records. Yes. How has that affected you? Well, yes, I love music. I grew up on vinyls like Led Zeppelin and the Beatles, and um, I was very kind of reclusive and kind of a socially awkward kid, and I would hide in my room and lock the door and draw and listen to a lot of his music that I was exposed to. So I guess whether it was subconsciously or consciously, I would use that music to draw inspiration from, but I would also spend a lot of time looking at his vinyls and having the whole experience of looking at the artwork, reading, uh, you know, reading about the stories of the artists and getting really inspired by the background story of the musicians, seeing the artwork that goes into the, the craft of album making back in the day, which seems to be a lost. So I feel like visually and musically, it's really inspired me a lot. So at what age did you go international? Around 33. It actually took quite a long time, although from an outside perspective, people that I'm friends with or family might say it happened quickly. It actually took quite a while. So my early 30s, I got some opportunities that I was working towards. Um, I got licensing deals and some royalty deals and, and a book deal. It kind of all happened one after the other. Um, so I suppose around 2007-ish, I suppose, I did an international tour in Brazil with four of my favorite musicians at the time. And that certainly launched me in a more international stage. I did a lot of international interviews in Brazil. I did a tour with three different cities. So that experience really kind of opened up the world to me. It was G-Love, Matt Costa, uh, ALO, and Donovan Frankenreiter. Um, to give you a quick background story on that, um, I was in Squaw Valley, California, and performing, I think, were like three of those four people that I just mentioned. And we were sitting there in the audience and watching these musicians that I you know, was really inspired by. And before that show, there was an art show. And we were walking around, and I had pretty much no major, major career at the time. And I told Chelsea at the time, I said, I'm not sure how, but somehow I'm going to do something with these musicians. They, they really inspired me. Long story short, six months to the day, I was in Brazil with all of them. Now, your work is not only um, seen all over the world, but you have it on shirts and t-shirts. Tell me about that. So yeah, a lot of that is licensing, but a lot of that is also building my own brand. Um, I've kind of been of the mindset to not wait around for someone to come to you, but rather to make opportunity by creating it for yourself, right? So I think a lot of that goes back to your question on musicians. I've based a lot of my business model on musicians like, let's say, Dave Matthews or the Grateful Dead, bands that really tied their brand into what they do. So I tried to create apparel and merchandising that um, supports and backs up the artwork that I do. Not everyone can afford an original. Not everyone can afford uh, expensive print. So I've tried to offer various price points and various mediums for people to purchase the art uh, in wearable formats, in other types of formats, and I've done licensing deals such as iPhone cases or puzzles. So 
I think art should be enjoyed, and I don't like hindering people's opportunity to enjoy that artwork. So that's kind of come about that way. You have a lot of Facebook friends and Twitter followers. How did you get involved with that, and, and how'd you get so many? Oh boy, well, it's a, it's a process, and I find that um, the more I do it, the more you learn about it. I guess it started back in the MySpace days, I suppose. So you had a MySpace page? I had page? a MySpace page, I admit it. Um, so yeah, it started back then, and it was just a great opportunity to network. Um, at the time, I was single, which is a helpful incentive, right? Um, but quickly I learned that it had career benefits, and strangely enough, a lot of the business opportunities and the networks, uh, network contacts that I've made, the musicians that I've met, kind of trickled back to a couple people that I've actually met through MySpace. Uh, my friend Sean Davey, whose work I was showing you earlier, the photographer, met through MySpace. So I feel that it's a great, free, easy and fun medium to network, um, much like you'd go to a networking meeting of professionals or uh, go to an art show and shake hands and kiss babies. It's a great way to do that on a mass global scale and I feel like I really kind of aligns with, with myself. I love connecting with people and it allows me to do that. So after college, I made my way to Belmar. It was a beach town that I spent a lot of years surfing in growing up and I decided to choose Belmar for the gallery space because it's a great um, surf town. It's a great town for people that love the ocean and culture. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Main Street is obviously the place you want to be and Northern Belmar in particular is a really happening up and coming spot. So in the gallery we can see that I have several other artists and creatives and of course we have my work um, on this wall as well as scattered throughout the gallery. You know we're going to take a break now. We come yes. back and want to take a look at your work. Sure. And we'll do that when we come back. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to This Is Jersey. We're continuing our conversation with artist Jay Alders at his CZEN Art Gallery and Experience in Belmar. He'll show us some of the fantastic paintings he has on display and gives us insight into his creative process. So Jay, we want to take a look at some of your work here. Uh, what's most important to you when you're creating art? When I'm creating artwork, what's funny about that question is at that exact moment, nothing's, nothing's really important. You're kind of in the zone. And I guess you can describe that, or I've described that before, as kind of being a witness to your own paintbrush. And it kind of sounds weird to say that, but when I'm really making art in the, in the right, proper mindset, uh, it feels like the painting is already there. I already see it envisioned on the blank canvas, and it's like I'm watching my hand do these miraculously cool things, and I feel like I'm almost as mesmerized as someone else may or may not be while watching a painter paint. It just is happening. So if you're doing it properly, your mind is nowhere. When I look at your work, I think of three things. Music, the ocean, and women's butts. Well, um, I don't know if those things per se are that important to me. They are, but I feel like it's more important to be painting things that inspire you. So there's been times in my life and there's moments when I'm painting when those things in particular might inspire me. However, I've also painted yoga and I've, I've recently gone into painting rock climbing. Basically, I like to paint things that I'm passionate about. So yes, I find a lot of beauty and passion and inspiration in the female form. So that clearly is a subject matter that I like exploring, uh, but also surfing and yoga and, and things that I really enjoy that I find inspiration and passion in become subject matters of my paintings. So even though I'm, I'm known as a surf artist or a surfer painter, um, I really truly just like to paint things that, that come to me and, and flow through me. The pieces that I have here are really a culmination of my career. So some of the pieces I have here represent the early phases of my career. Some of them are more recent works. One piece in particular as an example, uh, which is above us, is right past the light. That was actually the first painting of mine of the surf genre that kind of launched my career. So that painting definitely has a special place in my heart. It's landed on uh, magazine covers. It's really been the focus of a lot of my licensing um, aspirations in the early part of my career. And so that's really one of the paintings that really launched my career into the international and licensing world. I got a, a deal uh, very quickly after painting that uh, on my own skateboard line, uh, puzzle line. Um, so various things came from that painting. So. Uh, but it was also a painting where I really dove into and explored my passion for surfing and I feel like people can really connect with the emotion and the movement and the energy in the piece. Another painting of mine which I would like to point out is probably Rio Jam which is above the shelf at the front door. That piece was inspired by the Brazil tour in 2007 that I was on and what's really cool about that piece is there's actually a YouTube clip online on my YouTube channel which is actually from that exact moment. So we were in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil with some of my favorite musicians and some really good friends and they had a, a 
off-the-cuff jam that lasted for hours. It was just a jam. It was just for no reason other than to explore the music. And I sat in the corner and I sketched. And I sat next to the musicians and I sketched and I watched. Uh, just completely awestruck as though I stepped into a portal of, of the 60s watching Hendrix and, and Jim Morrison jam. It was a very similar feeling to me. So when I came back out of that um, session of sketching, I looked at it the next day and I said, this has to be a painting. I came home and from memory I painted the entire scene. Um, so that piece really connects with me quite a bit. Now, are you commissioned locally for work? I'm commissioned in general by work. I have a couple pieces here that were commissioned. Um, I don't limit my commission by a geographic basis. So I've been commissioned by people that were out of state, out of the country, and as well as people in the state. So I clearly am inspired by warm colors. I like dramatic feelings. I like um, painting as though I'm almost setting a scene for a photography shoot. So when I'm painting, I'm imagining this, this world, this paradigm that I'm creating. And I like to structure these imaginary lighting scenarios to really bring out the drama of a piece. What that means is sometimes there's backlighting, sometimes there's dramatic chiaroscuro effects, sometimes there's warm colors vibrating out that feels like you're in the piece. So I more or let, less let it happen as I'm painting. And even if I go into a piece with a color palette in mind, a lot of times it, it changes and kind of it guides me. When I look at this piece here, I see that lighting technique put in there. Tell me about this piece. This is actually a print of the original piece. The original piece was actually done with golds in there as well, which actually shimmers either, either, even more. This piece is called Throwing Lines, and this piece uh, it definitely has a stylistic um, difference to some of my other work, and that was on purpose. I wanted to always, I want to always kind of um, expand outside of my comfort zone, and I wanted to do something much more geometric and much more graphic design based using my trippy style so this was kind of a deviation from the norm, um, and that's how this piece came about. What's cool about this piece is I was actually working on another painting, and I came into the studio at the time very inspired. When you work with oils, you have to do things in a very structured way. Things have to dry a certain way, you have to do them in a certain, in a certain manner. Uh, when I got into the studio, the other painting was too wet to work on. I couldn't work on it. So I said, you know, I can't like, waste this inspiration. So I, I picked up this wooden panel, and I put it on the easel, determined to paint something with no plan whatsoever, I picked up the brush, not even, a, not even a sketch in mind. I just started painting. This is what came about. Neat. Now, you don't use your gallery as a space to paint. Why is that? Why is the separation there? Um, well, the gallery is more of a place to share work with the public. My studio time, I don't like to uh, share that time necessarily. It's a very personal time. It's almost as though you're writing a journal or a diary. If you can imagine writing a journal or a diary, you're talking to your spouse or your child in private and sharing that with the entire planet Earth. It's not something that's really meant to be that. It takes it out of its purest sense. When I'm painting, it's just about me and connecting with uh, something greater. When the piece is done, then it's time to share it in a more retail sense, and that's what this place is about. Jay, we have to take a break now. We come back, I want to talk about the rest of your gallery, but also you did some projects for uh, Sandy, and we'll do yeah. that when we come back. Great. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to This Is Jersey. We're talking to surf artist and Jersey guy Jay Alders, who set up Season Art Gallery and Experience to share ocean-expired art with the Jersey Shore and was a fierce advocate for the restoration after the destruction following Superstar and Sandy. Jay, you were involved with fundraising efforts, but you weren't in New Jersey. How were you involved with that? How did it take hold? Yes, yeah, so uh, Hurricane Sandy happened when we were living in Florida. We did a couple year stint in Florida to try to experience the whole tropical palm tree life. And uh, Hurricane Sandy happened, and uh, it was very challenging to be away. Uh, Counterintuitively, we actually wanted nothing more than to be in the storm with everyone. We were watching it from afar, watching the news. Uh, a feeling of helplessness came about us, and uh, it was devastating. It, I even get emotional even thinking back to that moment. I really wanted to be there, so what I did is I arranged donation points with a local magazine we ended up having two truckloads of donations from local residents in, in the Florida area where we were living for Hurricane Sandy victims. I also partnered with Eastern Surf Magazine to help them load another truckload of donations. While that was going on, friends at home who I had connected with decided to start a nonprofit called Rebuild Recover. And what that organization was meant to do in, in the urgency of the situation was to find a way to structure uh, distribution of all these various donations and to help people in the most need. So I designed a logo for them, but I also designed a t-shirt and hoodie design with my artwork on it that was inspired by the storm. I then donated 100% of the proceeds from that, and for the next several months, 
uh, we were able to uh, raise $15,000 or more that we donated to Hurricane Sandy victims. So even though I was afar, it felt very empowering to be able to help people that were uh, stuck in, in the storm. Great. You know, as, as I mentioned, your art gallery has artists from all over the world. I'd like just to see some of the artists work. So we have Sean Davey in the front, who's now a North Shore Hawaii-based surf photographer. He's very iconic. He's been published in dozens and dozens of magazines across the world. Before digital photography came about, he was one of these insane people floating around in 40, 50-foot surf, um, capturing these beautiful moments. Sean became a friend of mine a number of years ago, and I've been on international tours with him. And when I opened the gallery, I knew that I had to have a place in here dedicated to Sean's beautiful work. We also have um, some beautiful pieces on wood from Rob Havasey, who now lives in Costa Rica. And Rob actually put together a beautiful book of surf-inspired artists, and he included me in that book. And I thought that was a great gesture. I never forgot that, and I'm a very, very big fan of Rob's work, and I really wanted to have his work here as well. Tell me about the set lists you have. The set lists are by my good friend G-Love, who is an internationally famous blues hip-hop musician. I met G-Love in 2007 on a tour in Brazil that we were on together and we befriended. Um, coincidentally, we're basically the same age, so we had a lot in common with our upbringing and we both love to surf. And So uh, G-Love and I were surfing a couple of years ago, actually up the street in Asbury and in the lineup between waves, we were chatting and I said, you know, I'm, I'm gonna open a gallery. I would really love to include some of your stuff. And he had this collection of set lists that he does by hand before each show. And I thought, what a great way to capture that moment of a show for a fan. So I'm really honored to be the only gallery that's carrying his urban inspired artwork. My first trip to Hawaii years back, I came across an artist named Heather Brown. She lives in the North Shore of Hawaii. And uh, though we've never met, we correspond on, on social media quite a bit. So I feel like I know her and her husband. And her artwork is here. It's very whimsical, colorful, based on her lifestyle living at the North Shore of Hawaii, the surf mecca of the world. So this is one of my live paintings, which is another uh, form of my artwork I love to explore. It makes it more of um, entertainment and it kind of provides a definitive beginning and end when you do live painting. This piece was done on stage with um, a performance that Derling Dance Arts and I collaborated on with Portal Percussion. We did a show at the Algonquin in Manasquan, and that particular show was based around a painting, Fairy Tales, which promotes um, same-sex marriage equality. And this particular piece was done live on stage in about an hour. I painted it from start to finish. And, and I was painting this in the corner as the dance production was going on. And this is one of a few live paintings that I have in the gallery currently. Me, what are some other projects you have coming up? Well, I'm currently writing a book, which is actually taking up quite a bit of my time. I won't go into too much depth, but it's been a really exciting project to explore a new creative medium. I also just um, finished a illustration for The Expendables, which is an international band. And then I'm also working on some artwork for Slightly Stupid, which is another international, uh, very famous reggae-type genre band. Um, in addition to that, I have some charitable work coming up. I have a, several shows going on in Red Bank at Salon Concrete, um, and that's going to be going on in upcoming months, and it's going to benefit Hometown Heroes. Hometown Heroes has become a new recent focus of my philanthropic work, and what's really great about the organization is they almost create a virtual database of heroes. So let's say I'm an artist. What can I now offer? So it's about pairing needs of people in real need in the area with someone who's willing to offer their skills, their services, their resources, or their money. And it's really a great organization. It's very unique, and it's run by a friend of mine, Mike Schwartz. Very good. How can people find out about you? Well, people can find out about me a number of ways. JayAlders.com is a clear way to find me, but also social media. I'm very in touch with my social media audience, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Those sorts of things are a great, great way to connect with me personally. I do respond to everything personally, and I love interacting with people that find my artwork interesting. Great. Well, Jay, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much. Good luck much. with all that you do. Thank you. And thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time.